Bitcoin has always been polarizing. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Some people just want you to shut up about it. Today, we're going to be taking a look at five investors and business leaders who have all expressed serious doubts about the cryptocurrency. A lot of their criticisms about Bitcoin are pretty interesting. And the fact that these people are all worth at least seven figures means they might be worth at least listening to. Welcome back to Coach Stack, your secret weapon for improving yourself through business, investing, and personal growth. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on our next videos. All right, let's get into it. Number 1. Mohamed Al Arian Mohamed Al Arian is a name you might not have heard of before. That doesn't mean you should brush off his advice though. Let me quickly go over a few reasons why his opinion might carry some weight. For starters, Mohammed is a smart guy. He has not one, not two, but three separate postgraduate degrees in the field of economics. On top of that, he's the former CEO of PIMCO, a global investment firm with over $2.3 trillion under management. Still not impressed? He currently serves as the president of Queen's College in Cambridge and is a board member for six other universities and colleges around the world, all while holding the role of chief economic advisor at Alliance. I don't know about you, but imagining his schedule makes me want to start hyperventilating. Anyway, Mohammed is on the list because he's not the biggest fan of Bitcoin. Why? In his opinion, the cryptocurrency is wildly overpriced. In an interview with CNBC, he said he believes Bitcoin's true value is somewhere between one half to one third of its current value. His reasoning is pretty interesting. The way he sees it, the value Bitcoin gets from being a disruptive technology is superficial. Its real, lasting value lies in its feasibility as an actual currency. As it stands, Bitcoin is way too expensive to cut it as a generally accepted currency, at least according to Mohammed. Number 2. Jamie Dimon Of all the people on this list, Jamie Dimon has been Bitcoin's most outspoken critic. Actually, that doesn't really do it justice. I'll start again. Bitcoin makes Jamie Dimon mad. As the chairman and CEO of JP Morgan Chase, Jamie once went so far as threatening to fire any employee who invested in Bitcoin on the grounds of being bad at their jobs. Okay, sure, he was joking. But as they say, a joke is nothing but the truth wrapped in a smile. This hatred of Bitcoin is nothing new either. All the way back in 2017, Jamie told CNBC that Bitcoin was a scam. What justification did he have for such a bold statement? All he said on the matter was, it's just not a real thing. That vagueness is actually a trend in a lot of Jamin's criticisms of Bitcoin. It's made a few people question whether Jamie might be biased against Bitcoin. As the figurehead for America's third largest bank, Jamie fully relies on the traditional economic system, the same economic system that Bitcoin promises to disrupt. Now, there are a couple ways to look at this observation. You could look at Jamie's hatred of Bitcoin and see greedy desperation as he tries to defend his main source of income. Or you could look at it as a nervous rejection of a technology that has the potential to change everything about our financial system. I'll leave that one to the psychologists. The important takeaway is that Jamie hasn't been Bitcoin's biggest fanboy, that's for sure. Number 3. Paul Krugman as the chief economic columnist for the New York Times and a distinguished professor of economics at the City College of New York, Paul Krugman definitely knows a thing or two about what makes economic systems work. What's one economic system that's not his cup of tea? You guessed it, Bitcoin. More specifically, Paul doesn't trust Bitcoin's volatile price because he sees it as symptomatic of a much bigger flaw. To take a look at his point, we need to run through a quick economics lesson. Welcome to Currencies and Value 101. According to most economics, including our friend Paul, currencies need a reliable system for storing value. If they don't have one, wild price movements tend to make them impractical or downright pointless. In the US, the value of USD used to be based on the gold standard. That meant that every dollar printed needed to be backed by a predetermined amount of gold. Once the system was abandoned, the USD's value was in people's faith that the government would keep existing and keep collecting taxes. So what does this have to do with Bitcoin? Well, according to Paul, no one has been able to explain Bitcoin's system for storing value. In fact, no one's even demonstrated that it can store value. The fact that its price fluctuates so much may actually be evidence that it can't. That's not Paul's main point, though. He's not anti-Bitcoin, he's just Bitcoin cautious. His argument is that if you don't understand how a system works, it's probably best not to trust it with your life savings. Number 4. Howard Marks 
Listening to billionaire and Oak Tree Capital founder Howard Marks in interviews, it seems like he might be a regular leader of Paul Krugman's New York Times column. They definitely see eye to eye on Bitcoin anyway. Just like Paul, Howard has a problem with Bitcoin's wild price fluctuations. The way he sees it, currencies don't, or shouldn't, change in value by hundreds of percentage points overnight. It's as simple as that. He makes the argument that Bitcoin's peaks and valleys only start to make sense when you begin to think of it as a commodity rather than a currency. He sometimes compares Bitcoin to the rise of tulip bulbs as an investment commodity in historical Dutch society. In case you're not familiar with this bizarre part of Dutch history, let me explain. In Europe in the mid-1600s, tulips were king. Having tulips growing in your front yard became a viral trend before viral trends were a thing. The climate of the Netherlands was ideal for tulip growing, and tons of farmers dropped everything to start supplying them. This rush led to a massive commodity bubble that wreaked havoc on Dutch society. Everyone, rich and poor, began buying, growing, and trading tulips. During the peak, a single bulb was selling for around $100,000 in today's money. What a time to be alive. Sadly, the profits couldn't last forever. When the market was finally saturated, the great tulip bubble burst and left tons of people without food and shelter. Howard Marks sees a lot of similarities between this commodity bubble and Bitcoin's meteoric rise. Number 5. Warren Buffett for the last critic on our list, we're sticking with an old favorite, Warren Buffett. Whether you're a regular Coach Stack viewer or not, Warren needs no introduction, but I'll give you one anyway. He's quite possibly the best value investor of all time and currently sits in 8th place for world's richest person. Oh, and he's not the biggest fan of Bitcoin. According to Warren, Bitcoin isn't a secure investment. He sees the value of Bitcoin as almost entirely speculative because it doesn't currently have many real-world uses. If he's right, that means its price has the potential to fall big time if markets move on or lose interest. Warren makes a logical point, but it's worth mentioning that he hasn't always been the most clued in when it comes to new technologies and tech-based investments. At 90 years old, we have to forgive Warren for keeping it old school with most of his portfolio. He likes to understand the things he buys. However, if you've watched any of our other videos on his investment record, you'll know that the list of companies with business models that Warren doesn't understand includes quite a few A-listers. Google, Amazon, Facebook, all these investments got a no from Warren in pitch meetings. Well, if he doesn't feel he understands how traditional tech companies make and keep money, it's not hard to imagine him struggling with the concept of blockchain and how they appear set to change the world, just like the internet did. This might be another case where Warren's input should be taken with a grain of salt, but only time will tell. That's all for today's video on some of Bitcoin's most important, rich, and economically knowledgeable critics. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.